If you enjoy watching Common Ground online, please consider making a tax-deductible donation at lptv.org. Lakeland Public Television presents Common Ground, brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. My name is Carol Lang, and I'm going to take you on a tour today of the Pine Tree Patchworkers Quilt Show, and it's called Home Sweet Quilted Home. First we have our vendors, and some of them are local, and many of them are from other places throughout the state of Minnesota. This is our members' boutique, and the members would take things that they have from their stash that either they no longer want or something that they want to sell. So they bring all these things, and of course there are other shoppers who want to look at somebody else's stash and buy from there also. The quilts are categorized in themes. So we have some brights in some of these areas, some bright colors and bright new designs. This might be something that you would see that is something that is rather new. It's a new style, it's new fabrics. And this is a, a piece done by Kathy Bardolph, one of our members. And um, she's used a lot of modern fabrics and some really brights and new things. So. Okay, as we move along, you can again see themed with some of the modern quilts and colors. And then over here we have a lot of the bed quilts, you know, the, the bed size, king size quilts. And on the back row here, these are called challenge quilts, all these small ones along here. And the challenge quilt, when we, we do a, a quilt show, we give it a name. Like this time it's Home Sweet Quilt at Home. So each member was challenged to make an 18 by 18 wall hanging, something to do to represent home. And along with it, they had to have the, these little words here. We had a sheet of words and each participant had to use this element somewhere in their quilt. This quilt is called Messy Houses by Brenda Peterson. And she thought this represented her home because she said, I'm a quilter and I'm, um, I, do, I love to quilt and I love to do these things and my house is always messy. And so that's the pattern name. And then she incorporated the different things, the different words in her squares with messy houses. Okay, again, you see some of the large size quilts here, the bed quilts. And in, in this stall here, we've got a lot more of the art quilts. This one and this one are both art quilts that were done by one of our chairpersons, Jan Sheets. You can see it looks like a painting. You know, when you stand from afar, it, you, you can't believe this is all done out of fabric. And so she's got a good eye for all, these, all the different colors. So we have a guild meeting once a month, and we meet at Lord of Life Lutheran Church on the second Monday of every month at 6.45. And we have such a variety of quilters at our, in our guild. We have very beginners, and we, you know, we have some of the masters of quilting in our group. And you know, we have a business meeting, but we also uh, make time during every meeting to have show and tell, and it's kind of everybody's favorite time where, where you show what you've done. We love every level of quilting, and we love to see how members progress. Over here, let me show you this one. This is Karen Martin, um, who is one of our members, has done beautiful, beautiful applique work. And you can see all the detail. All of this is turned under and stitched so you cannot see the stitches. It's incredible. I'm Carla Overland. I'm from Cherrywood Fabrics. We are a hand-dyed fabric business in Brainerd, Minnesota. This is the first challenge that we've done. It's, um, it's sent out open up to any quilter or artist who's interested and we give them a set of guidelines. And our guidelines were, our theme was Wicked. Our colors were taken from the Wicked logo, so we, I dyed up three special greens that, and a black. So everybody started out with the same color fabrics. And they had to be 20 inches square. And they could add other colors to it as long as it was cherrywood hand dyed fabric. So these quilts are all cherrywood. And then on top of that, they could just do whatever they wanted. So we've got different techniques. There's painting and beading and hand stitching and machine quilting, and they could do whatever they wanted. Quilting is just another art form. Instead of using paint, you're using fabric. We got 114 entries, which was amazing. We were, since this is the first time we've done it, 
We were expecting hopefully like 25, so getting 114 was awesome. The really cool thing about this, it's been seen by so many non-quilters in the public places, and people just are amazed that these are made out of fabric. So it's opened up the, a whole new audience and people can really appreciate it as art form. These are the top three winners. We did have a group of five judges choose their favorites, which was very hard to do. And they came up with the first place winner. She's actually from Fargo, North Dakota. And she won $650 worth of fabric. And second place winner got $200 and third place got $100. So all of these quilts traveled, 114 quilts and they are um, just amazing, the amount of work, the detail, like for instance, this one is wire that's actually curled up and sewn onto the fabric. There's beading, there's very, very small, tiny piecing. This isn't all black, there's many shades of blues and blacks and, and purples. There's embellishment with jewelry and ribbon. This is one of my favorites, and it actually won viewer's choice Every quilt show that we bring these to, we have the audience pick their favorite, and this is the one that won viewer's choice at the last quilt show. And I love her perspective, like you're looking down into the tornado. What inspired me to do this was I saw Wicked on Broadway, and the costuming is just amazing, and the sets were amazing, and I'm a graphic designer, so the logo immediately spoke to me, and I love the graphic nature of it. So that's what started this whole thing. These quilts here are actually representations of the quilts. They're flat. I actually had them printed on fabric because the original quilts are still traveling with the, uh, the Wicked Traveling Tour. So right now it's in Denver, Colorado, and I'm not sure where it's going to go next, but they chose nine quilts to keep traveling. Because this was so successful, we were asked immediately, are you going to have a book? I'd love to have pictures of all these quilts. So we did publish a book, and all 114 quilts are in here. And I give each quilt a page with artist statements and a detail shot, because I know that I like to look at these over and over, so it's really nice to have something to refer to, especially if you're a quilter and you have a creative block, and you can just page through this and just be totally inspired. This area is, represents all of the community service work that our club does, starting with the crisis quilts. We donate about 200 quilts just to the crisis area in a year. And club members make the quilts and we donate them to social services in Crowing County and other area counties that need quilts for people that are in need people that um, have experienced some sort of a crisis, like a fire, or a child being removed from the home, or um, some type of support for, for teenagers that, that are living away from home for various reasons. Every habitat house that is built in our area give the gift of a quilt, a bed quilt, and when they have their open house, when the, when the people move into the, their Habitat for Humanity house, we present them with the quilt. And this one is going out to a, a family in this area in the middle of July. So that's our next one. Quilts of Valor is an organization that makes quilts for servicemen who have been wounded in the war. And unfortunately, we have been making quilts of valor for way too many years. And, um, but we still have a very dedicated group of women that are making quilts and they, they have a kind of a standard size. So if you look at this one behind me here, the red, white, and blue, this is a very good example of one that would be presented to a wounded serviceman. And sometimes we hear from them, sometimes, you know, if a, if a quilter puts her label on it, we hear back from these service people and they're always so very, very thankful or their families are very, very thankful for the gift they've received. Then on the table here we have our placemats, and these are given to our Meals on Wheels recipients, and they they love their their treats that they get at Christmas time. Now, wouldn't you just love to eat your lunch on a placemat that has cupcakes on it, or um, as you're looking out the window eating your lunch and having the placemat with the this cutest bird ever? So those are really fun, and we enjoy giving those away. And usually we give about 90 to 100 placemats each Christmas. And then we also do the Christmas stockings. And the Christmas stockings go to kids who are at port, and it also goes to 
different organizations that we would maybe send our crisis quilts to, you know, to social services at families in need. And then we try and find little gifts that go inside too. So we collect uh, lotions and um, little games and, and fun things to stuff the stockings with also. These are jail quilts. We have one group of people that sew quilts with the women at the Crow Wing County Jail and they've been doing that for several years and it's a great boost for some of the women who maybe feel at the, they're at the bottom of their emotional being and somebody comes in and takes time to sew with them and some have maybe never sewed and now all of a sudden they can they've got this done and this might go home to one of their families uh, go to one of their children so it gives them a really boost that they can accomplish something when they're really at their low so this whole bay is quilts that were done in classes. You know, if you sign up for a class and you work in like maybe these quilts, it took over a year to make and they do maybe a block of, you know, it's called block of the month mm -hmm. or a section at a time. Mm -hmm. And then they, they come back and they meet and they show what they've done and then they get instructions for the next section that they're going to be doing and, and then come back, go home, do it and then they come back and show what they've done and until the quilt is done. So it's kind of a fun way of learning and accomplishing something. People that don't quilt and you talk about quilting, sometimes they think you're kind of crazy because they see how much fabric you own and they see how much time you spend on it. Um, so that when you're with the people that in your, in your group, your quilting group, it's a great feeling of camaraderie. It's a really good bonding time. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org.